In this video, I'll do a quick review of creating a model and a detailed drawing for one of your commercial parts. And this one's going to be for the brake rotor. Make sure you check your units, English units, standard inch IPT is how we'll start. Create that. Start a sketch. Choose a plane. And that OD is 10 inch. Oops, I finished my sketch. Extrude that, and it's 3 sixteenths thick. New sketch to create the hub, which is 2.5 diameter. And that's one inch thick. And we got the hole in the hub, which is one inch diameter. Also, don't forget about the keyway. So I'll use the rectangle tool. It's a quarter inch wide key for one inch shaft. And you're going to make sure that that's centered. And then I can trim away what I don't need. Finish that sketch. And I'll punch that hole, which is all the way through. OK, so there's our brake rotor. Remember, for Inventor, you hold down the Shift key and your middle mouse button to rotate the part. OK, so let's save that. Go save as, and I'm going to put it in. I've got a folder on my desktop for the commercial parts. Uh, remember to save it at under the correct number. That's what's going to show up in the title block. So that part is CP285110. And now we'll create a drawing. So we'll do new. We want to do an ANSI inch drawing. Now it's always going to default to this D size paper. It's way too big for our parts. Uh, it makes the text and dimensions too small to read. So do not put your detailed drawings on a D size sheet. So if you go up here and right click on sheet one and you edit the, che the sheet, you can change it to a B size. That's better for, for single details. Okay, so let's create a base view. Now this is going to pop up. Remember, you can rotate through your different options for views here. The front view should be the main view. It shows the most information, fewest hidden lines, most detail for the part. And once you're happy with that, let's project our right side, our top, and then our ISO. And right click to say OK and just kind of get see what we got here. Uh, clearly this scale is not right, so if you Right click inside that box and say edit view. You can just come up here and change the view. Half scale looks pretty good. Now these two views are tied to that front view directly, so they're, they're going to go ahead and scale up. And this one will do the same. Inside that box, red, uh, right click, edit view. And I could have done that a minute ago, but that's OK. A um, couple things here. One is because of this geometry here, typically we like to do a front view, right side, and top view. That's the standard way you lay out views. The top view and the front and the right side view are pretty much identical, so let's just delete that one. We don't really need that view, and it gives us more room for what we got to do. Let's see. The other thing is, let's, if you don't like this view, you're not stuck with it. You can change it. Again, put your cursor inside that box right click and go edit view and then right up here on this cube if you click on the little arrow and do custom view orientation it'll take you back to what your uh, model looks like and now again hold down shift and I can turn this to get exactly what I want once I have the view that I want on my drawing then click on that and that's what you get so that's a little bit nicer view so you're not stuck with whatever the software decides 
let's add hidden lines. So you should always show hidden lines on your front, top, and right side views. Inside that box, right click, edit view. And let's see, here's our different styles. Uh, that one shows hidden lines, that one shows hidden lines remo removed, and that's shaded. Don't use the shaded, it takes up too much ink when you go to print them out. It's fine for some uh, visual tools. So my hidden lines are shown there. There's no hidden lines on this view. I just want to make sure everybody knows to turn on your hidden lines. Uh, let's add, go to annotate, and let's put a center mark in there. And let's put center lines. So use this center line bisector. Click on the top of the hole. Now remember, that's the top of the keyway. Top of the hole, bottom of the hole. That'll put your center line on there. Okay, so what we have left to do is dimensions using your dimension tool. Remember, good dimensioning practices. Don't crowd the part. Don't dimension on the view, right? Like don't dimension like that. It's unacceptable. Pull the view outside the part. It's very easy to edit or simply redo a dimension. Oops, redo <laughs> a dimension if you don't like it. So nice and clean, very readable. Now notice what happens here. This is a complete hole, but because it's broken, it's showing up as a radius. That's incorrect. It needs to be shown as a diameter. So if you double click on that, and uh, that's your dimension. You just want to hide that whole thing because I'm going to replace it. Click on the diameter symbol and then type in your value. Since it's a half inch radius, we know that's a one inch diameter. For this keyway, now here where it's really, it's really tempting here to dimension on the part, but you need to pull that out away from the view. Likewise here for this height, pull it uh, off of the view. Do not dimension on the part. And then we've got to show these two thicknesses here. Let's see if I can pull it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And, you know, tune them up as need be so it looks appropriate. I think I have everything covered. We want to fill out the title block using the text tool. Now, what you want to put in the title block is the name of the part. In this case, it's the brake rotor. And then put your name. Say OK. That's what will be in the title block. The drawing number will be put in there when you save the drawing. Now, this may put your name in there, but it's really hard to read. I want you to type your name in in the title block. So let's go ahead and save this. So we'll do a save as again and make sure I put it in a folder. Uh, I've got all my commercial parts in this one folder. The file name is going to be the same name. It's that commercial part number that I gave you. That'll show up in there. Do not type in a name. Don't save it as a name because we need draw our drawings to have numbers. When you create your assembly models, it's going to take these and put them into the parts list and that's how you want it to appear. Lastly, we want to export this as a PDF file so you can send them to me. So we'll go file. Uh, now this software won't let you save it as a PDF. So what you have to do is export. So go file, export, PDF. We're going to use the same name except to put your last name in front of that part number, right? your last name and then the part number because everyone's going to turn in this part number I need to see your name on that sheet and again make sure it's a PDF I'm putting it in that same folder and then once you have that th that's what I'm going to have you send to me to grade is the PDF files not the drawing files